Mal. Rise and shine guys and welcome to Spring Awakening. Some people think that Frank Wedekind's play is just about the uptight society of 19th century Germany which has long since passed away but let me tell you something. Spring Awakening is about sex, performance pressure in school and adolescent suicides and this I think is as up to date today as it was in 1890-91 when Wedekind wrote his play. Thanks a bunch, this was the allegory of spring. The most important figures of the play are Melchior Gabor, around 16, a high school student and a little too intelligent to be happy. His friend Moritz Stiefel is also a nice guy, but by contrast to Melchior, he's quite a low performer in school, running the risk of having to repeat a year. Wendler Bergmann is 14, pretty and very curious about anything human that looks like Melchior Gabor. Mrs. Gabor, Melchior's mother, is a kind of historical forerunner of the hippies. Very anti-authoritarian, believes in reason and individual responsibility, so all in all she's a very bad mother. Mrs. Bergmann, Wendler's mother, is the complete opposite of Mrs. Gabor. A supermother, a helicopter mother, completely prudish and petty bourgeois, but quite caring. Well, Mrs. Gabor is quite caring too. Mr. Gabor appears in only one, but an important scene in the play. He's an order-loving advocate. Finally, there's the masked man, and scholars tell us that he's an allegorical figure, an allegory. What the hell is an allegory? If I say, she set my heart on fire, this is a metaphor in which the fire stands for love. If, however, I've got a cute little naked child sitting on a huge heart, shooting arrows all over the place while rose petals rain down, then this is a personification of love, and a metaphorical figure in literature or art which is so elaborate is called an allegory, okay? And there's other students and figures that crop up only once. The play starts with Melchior, Moritz and their classmates complaining about their homework. Boah, gosh, we got such a load of homework. Let's play a little more. Yeah, play a little more. While Melchior and Moritz go for a walk together and Moritz goes, gosh, we got such a load of homework. Oh, cut it, will you? You are not such a smurf as the others, are you? Now, when I have children one day, I'll raise them in a totally different style, like girls and boys together for one thing, sure, until someone gets pregnant. <laughs> that doesn't happen so fast, does it? You don't have a clue, do you? Uh, no? Okay, listen, I'll explain it to you. No, I don't want to hear! And he actually covers his ears. Listen, why don't you write it up for me? Okay. So Melchior promises to write a sex education treatise for his friend Moritz. Then Wendler and a couple of friends walk by and Wendler goes, wasn't that Melchior Gabor and his friend? Yeah, sigh. By the way, I'm regularly beaten up at home. What? It's always the best education in the play. On the next day in school, all the students are there together again, except for Moritz. And one of them goes, where's Moritz? And another Smurf replies, he's broken into the faculty room. Gosh, what if he gets caught? But Moritz comes back, glowing like a light bulb, and goes, Melchior, I've done it, I've passed, oh my god, if they had failed me, I'd have shot myself. And to make us understand what springtime really means, on the next day, Wendler and Melchior meet in the forest by chance. Wendler, what are you doing here? Oh, hi, Melchior, I get that wood rough. And she puts down her dandruff, her wood rough, and because they got a little time before they need to go home, they lay down a bit in the grass and chat away about education and physical punishment, and Wendler goes, Melchior, would you mind beating me? What do you mean, beat you? Well, I've never been beaten. C could you beat me? But I can't cut it and beat me. And he takes a tree rod and goes, whip, ouch, harder. Whip, uh, harder. But I can't, come on now, harder. Okay, you witch. And he completely thrashes her a couple of times and then, ah, runs away and feels ashamed. But he hasn't caused any serious damage and Wendler has learned something. At Melchior's place, he and Moritz sit together in the evening and study, and uh, Moritz goes then, Now I'll manage this time, I'll get a pass! When Mrs. Gabor comes in and goes, Darlings, tea time! And she pours them a little tea and goes, Mr. Stiefel, you don't look too well. And Melchior goes, Well, he works all night, he never sleeps, but that's not healthy at all at your age. She's definitely very anti-authoritarian. Melchi! Yes. And Mrs. Gabor points to a book on the table. What book is that? That's Faust by Goethe. Faust by Goethe? You read such like pulp fiction at your age? Well, you'll have to decide that for yourself. She goes out and Moritz goes, Hey, it's because of the Gretchen story, isn't it? Well, she's really porn, ain't she? And Melchior flips out and goes, Oh, for heaven's sake, is everything always only about P and V? A little comment here. Society in Wiedekind's time was so prudish that the entire play contains more dashes and dots than words, at least in the decisive places. But you can safely assume that it is exactly what you think it is. 
If you're not sure, please consult the Reclam edition. And Moritz goes, speaking of which, thanks for the treatise and the illustrations were great as well. <laughs> And as you can clearly see, we switch over to the Bergmanns. Those bourgeois flats all look alike, really. We meet Mrs. Bergmann, who rushes towards Wendler and goes, Wendler, Wendler, the stork was here again. And finally, you've got another nephew. You're an aunt again. The stork. Yeah, the stork. Mom, I'm 14. Will you please explain to me how procreation works? And her mother turns pale and retreats three steps and goes, What? I'm to explain this to you? No way, this is terrible. Mom, please. No, please, I won't listen at all. And the mother is mortally embarrassed and goes, it's like this, you've got to get married to a man and have to really love him and then you get children. And that's all. Uh, yeah. And this was sex education at the Bergmanns. A little later on a hot summer day, Melchior has sneaked off to a hayloft and Wendler finds him and goes, Melchi, you've got to come out. It's going to start to rain and you have to lend them a hand. But she sits down next to him and he goes, leave me alone, will you? And she says no and both go on saying no for some time and then they throw themselves on each other and have sex although they don't really know what they're doing there a little later we see moritz out in nature at a river and he goes shit i did fail after all well then i'll have to and threateningly he raises a pistol when in the background he hears moritz moritz and he goes oops uh hello ilse and ilse comes up to him and he goes so how are you doing ilse and she goes, well, I'm a muse now for various artists, like with champagne all day and all of the night and orgies all the time. Quite exhausting, you know. How about yourself? Would you like to come over to my place, perhaps? And he goes, uh, yeah, no, I've got such a lot of work to do. And she goes, okay, boring. And she goes, while he longingly goes, Ilse. Naturally, he would have liked to go with her, especially since he has never known the most human experience before. Shooting himself now. Bang. After this tragic incident, the Muppets called school professors sit together in the faculty room and discuss what to do with the perpetrator and the director goes, we have to chuck out the culprit at once, colleagues. Don't you agree? And his colleagues go, well, I don't know, but could we please open a window? Not in my back. Yes. No. Vote. And they decide to have the window bricked up. And the director goes, okay, back to the culprit, Melchior Gabor. Melchior enters and the director goes, Mr. Gabor, did you write this pornographic product? And Melchior answers, yes, I did write that, but it isn't pornographic at all. What? You dare to talk back? Get out once and for all? And this was Melchior's trial and relegation from school. A little later, Moritz's funeral is being held in the presence of the dignitaries of the town who sneer at the suicide. And the priest goes, well, although he hasn't deserved it, we still bury him now. Moritz's father is weeping, but rather for himself, and goes, He was not my son, I've never liked him. And nobody asks for or cares about why he killed himself. At the Gabors, there's an argument going on between the parents now that their son has been chucked out, and Mr. Gabor goes, We'll put him in a reformatory. That's a kind of prison for adolescents. I'll get a divorce if you do that. But he slept with Wendler too. What? I don't believe it. Yes, I've got a letter from Melchior to Wendler, which Mrs. Bergman has given to me. What? Okay, then let's put him in the reformatory. The reformatory looks like this. Uh, there's the same Smurfs there as everywhere, except that the games they're playing are perhaps a little more fun, like jerk-off contests and beating up each other. And Melchior goes, Boy, the only contribution I could make here would be to tell a few dirty stories, but I think I'll rather break out at once. At the Bergmanns, the doctor just called because Wendler feels sick and not good at all. The doctor says she's got anemia, but the mother sobs and Wendler goes, But anemia isn't so bad, it'll blow over, mum. Anemia? You're pregnant, you silly cow. And Wendler sits up and goes, Listen, mum, that is perfectly impossible, because neither am I married nor have I loved a man. Ah, oh, no. Ding dong. Ah, that's Mother Schmidt. Finally, she's going to help us. And we are not told how Mother Schmidt is going to achieve that. A little later, Melchior has broken out of the reformatory and at the cemetery he stumbles over Moritz's headstone first and then stands in front of Wendler's headstone. She's died a short while ago too, allegedly of anemia, but in reality because the incompetent abortion which Mother Schmidt has performed killed her. And when Melchior turns around, a headless person is, well, not exactly facing him. Hello, Melchior, it's me, Moritz. But you're dead. Yeah, but it's not much worse here than anywhere else. You want to come too? And he goes, oh, yeah, no, maybe. Come on. 
Well, and he's just about made up his mind to accompany Moritz when suddenly the masked man appears and goes, Stop! You stay right there, Mr. Gabor. You'll come with me. And he steps in between them. And Melchior goes, But I don't know you at all. Right, and that's the reason why you should get to know me first. The headless one wants to cheat you. Really? Okay then, I'll go with you. And they walk away. Once more, Melchior turns back and goes, And don't lose your head, Moritz. Thus Melchior doesn't follow his friend Moritz into suicide, but walks into life, a silver lining in the otherwise rather dark horizon of this play. Now for all people who seriously think about banishing sex education from school syllabi, this work should be set reading. This, ladies and gentlemen, was Spring Awakening by Frank Wiedekind. <laughs> Oops, I nearly forgot the really important stuff. Wiedekind's grandfather, Friedrich Kammerer, invented the match. Wiedekind himself studied a little literature, tried out law, and worked, among many other jobs, at the circus and in the marketing department of Maggi, which is the German version of Oxo. He was in prison for Lee's Majesty and died due to the consequences of an appendicitis operation. Thanks a bunch. Yeah.